you should listen to the legal statement also on this channel but I am recording government contractors or subcontractors agents of the government acting under color of law in the public fora and they do not have any expectation of privacy and for that reason alone it's compliant with all audio recording laws it's a simple stuff there is no dispute here at all what happened and so and then and so so then when he cannot do the s properly then you you see him uh he's trying to then what you will see is uh he will ask me to uh what he will say is what neurological problem are you here for today and Everyone knows that for a neurological problem or when you go to a neurologist, it's usually a very long visit. Uh, it could be 40 minutes, one hour, and even a lot of neurologists, they actually uh, put on their website that they give you a full hour to visit with the neurologist because the neurologist visit, uh, unlike other specialists, it's, it's longer than what you get with your primary care. So if you get 15, 20 minutes with your primary care, you can easily get 40 minutes and one hour with the neurologist and they go over your basic, you know, all your, you know, your entire body, and which he's supposed to do anyway. Any doctor which is on, you know, is the rule is that any, any doctor who and this is not just Medicaid but the Medicare if you get Medicare you're supposed to do this for all patients which you do a complete uh, history and a complete almost almost complete physical I guess and you do a review of systems and but now watch he's going to try to pigeon me he's he's going to try to to pigeonhole and say that I have to give him a specific neurological condition for which he can treat. When in fact, what he's supposed to do is, he's supposed to listen through what I have and find the neurological conditions. And he's also supposed to uh, find the other conditions. He's not exempt from the other conditions. He's still a physician. And so, so this is the next trick that he does. And listen to this. Okay, okay. So, um, after that, get to the point. Well, now, let's, let's, okay. So, so, take a time out here. Right. Why are you here for today? Okay, okay. So, when that happened, uh, apparently, well, actually, not apparently, obviously, I had uh, injuries to the head. Well, I, and, I don't know. I okay. don't understand what you're talking about at all with that. So, okay. well, what can I do for you today? Okay, okay. So, um, after that point, uh, what happened is my blood pressure, which was 124 over 74, went up to 170. I'm sorry, 165 over uh, 85. So I know the systolic went up, and that's the problem we ran into now. Because obviously, now I do have a heart condition, and I didn't have that kind of a heart condition before that incident. The heart condition is. Um, diastolic heart failure and also so in the last well, that's, I'm still not exactly sure okay. what, what neurological issue you're coming in with okay okay, okay okay that's the neurological issue um, what's the neurological so, issue? so the doctor started treating for the diastolic heart failure no, that's not a month. neurological issue that's a cardiology issue the dias okay I understand the diastolic heart failure is a cardiological issue right. it's not a neurological issue so uh, so why I, is it that we can okay. do for you? I'm, 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 I think right. we're kind of just getting into spinning our wheels here. We had right. seen you right. back in 2014. Okay. I'm, I'm, I think right. we're kind of just getting into spinning our wheels here. We had right. seen you right. back in 2014. Okay. And you would come in with dizziness and numbness. Right. And I had recommended some evaluation at that point. Right. And you, I guess, didn't do any. Right. Right. Because so at this point, right. you know, unless there is a clear question that okay, I think that so, I can help so, you with. Right. Then uh, you know, I think it's probably better if we don't go any further with. Oh, okay. This. Well, and, the, and that well, I the don't clear question is right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. So, so what? What okay. is it? I'll, I'll let you speak. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. Go ahead. So, so what is it 
from a neurological point of view that you would like me to address today because I haven't heard anything okay. that I can address from a neurological right. point of view. Right, right, and right. I don't want to waste right. your time. I, I don't want to waste my time. Because what happened is, hold on a second. Okay, okay, let me okay, finish. Go ahead. Okay, let me just hold on. Okay, okay go ahead. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, unless you can, unless there's something that falls in within my aspect of things, and I think we're just going to have to stop this right here because I don't think that I can help you, and I don't want to take your money if I can't help you. Okay. Right? Or waste your time. Okay. Right? I, oh, I stop tape. Um, if he wanted me to just specify what neurological condition I'm here with today, he could have told me that at the beginning of the visit. Anyway, he's not supposed to be doing that at any point in the visit. Uh, so, so he could not sustain his life. So he uh, he came down to asking what neurological condition do I have and then when I also mentioned the heart condition diastolic heart failure uh, he said that's to be treated by a cardiologist and that's not a neurological condition well it's true it's not a neurological condition but with any kind of heart failure um, the main one one of the main signs actually two of the you get one of the main signs is actually you get um, reduce blood flow throughout the body and that's called poor perfusion so you get poor perfusion and that's one of the signs and you actually find it oftentimes uh, in the head and that's clearly with a neurologist so the neurologist so he's actually going to be ordering me this test to check for blood flow in the head uh, and then obviously it's going to come back as is reduced but then he's, he doesn't want to f he doesn't want to recognize that the problem is coming from the heart uh, and so uh, and we always know that in fact for almost especially for like simple conditions like migraines uh, it's very they always do a very good uh, a very good check of the heart and sometimes heart conditions give uh, a problem like migraines and also when you treat with migraines if you have a heart condition uh, you could make that heart condition worse so you know a neurologist is always connected to a heart condition and so you know now he just wants me to specify out my heart condition my, my, my specific neurological condition well no one goes anywhere into a neurologist office say I have specific neurological condition and it is this this and this now that's for the neurologist to find out and and, and even it, what it looked like he was finding out when I told him about the diastolic heart failure uh, he's saying it's not well if you have like a heart attack that's probably doesn't have much connection to a neurological condition but um, something like heart failure definitely does because it's it, it's about reduced blood flow through the body and uh, the you know the most important part of the body other than the heart is the brain and so if you have reduced blood flow to the brain and you don't recognize the heart condition you're not going to go anywhere and obviously that's what it is he he doesn't want to he doesn't want the proper history and he doesn't want to reach the right conclusion and this is and no doubt he's working in cahoots with you know those individuals that's that's very clear he's not giving me my medical care he's not giving me my medical care as specified in the law I mean he works for this Medicaid plan and they have a whole bunch of rules and it's kind of in in plain English and it actually comes out from federal law and state law so he's 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 completely not uh, obeying federal and state law when he does this and I actually had I gave him a sheet of paper I actually have a whole lot of neurological conditions uh, or you know what he would call and I think they're all like this they're all part of the same thing one of the things is because of the heart failure and I have reduced blood flow coming out of the heart uh, I get a lot of shoulder and neck and back pain upper back pain right around the heart and also I had a CT showing in which the radiologist 
who read the CT who actually used the word ratty. R-A-T-T-Y. He actually used the word ratty to describe my upper back. So I'm having the spine problem obviously and that's actually a problem for a neurologist. And then the spine problem and when the heart problem got worse, the spine problem got worse and the spine actually pushes up into the brain and that causes numbness and dizziness in the brain and that's a neurological problem. Then I also brought to him the issue of uh, when that um, I feel like sleeping many different times of the day it's not like I feel like sleeping all day, but when I do activities, when I do like 15, 20 minutes of activity or even one hour of activity, I feel like going and sleeping for about 15, 20 minutes. And one of the issues I brought up to Dr. Vicker was, um, so would that be a good recommendation for me to get, I guess it would amount to frequent naps throughout the day, to help both the heart condition and the brain injury. And everyone knows for a brain injury, you need a lot of rest. And also for a heart condition such as heart failure, also you need a lot of rest. So uh, I came to him to also ask if that would be okay. Because you know, a patient cannot really on his own uh, start, even if he feels like he needs to sleep a lot, he cannot do it. Because normally that is, you know, if you don't have a doctor's recommendation, yeah, that's, that's interesting. You know, even if you feel sleepy, you're really, and if you sleep, uh, it's actually considered either you're having like a psych psychological problem or you are like malangering, which means you're making stuff up. Because, right, I, you know, even for a thing like, you know, if, if you want to nap throughout the day, you really need to get your doctor's approval first. And it's not something you can make up on your own. So that too I came to him with. And that's also something to be evaluated by a neurologist. A neurologist actually, when people have various kind of pain or dizziness or sleepiness or whatever kind of sensation and it's affecting their life, it's actually the neurologist's job to figure out exactly what's going on, whether there is actually an organic etiology or whether it's a psychological condition or whether the person is making it up for getting some kind of benefits or something. And this is all the neuro neurologist uh, job and he doesn't want to do any of it because obviously he doesn't want to deal with that history and he already lied about the history and so you know you know once you don't want to start with that history uh, how is it possible to go forward so he's just going to be going from one trick to the other